Hi, Don and Kelly. This is Suzanne. Wanted to um, point out some good things that are going on in your swim video and then point out some uh, things that we can work on improving. I'm sure you've seen this video clip a couple times now. It's a good video clip. It shows us a nice side underwater view of what you're doing and that's the best shot to get if you can only get 10 or 15 seconds of video. So here's what I like that you're doing well. First of all, you've got really nice body extension. If we go to where your right arm is completely extended and we're to draw a line from the fingertips of your right hand down through your toes, really nice body extension. I don't know how tall you are in real life, but in the pool, you're swimming very tall here. Uh, that's good. A lot of people swim short and um, don't get as much length out of their body as they could. So that's great. That's with your right arm forward. And let's stop it with your left arm forward as well. Okay. Now that's a breathing stroke, so it's a little bit unfair, but even still, with your left arm at maximum extension, you've got really nice extension here, so that's great. The other thing that I really like about your stroke is that even though you've got a little bit of a flutter kick going on, um, in your body somewhere is the sense of what, uh, what a two-beat kick is, and I'll show you how I can see that. When the right arm extends fully here, there's this moment, okay, probably not aware of it, but there's this moment where the right foot here is up near the surface, okay, and the left foot is a little bit lower relative to the right foot. Now, if you look carefully, the hips are rotated at an angle, and if you were to visualize where your heels are in relation to each other, your heels are, heels are level right now with the surface of the water, okay? So when right arm is extended, the right heel relative to the left seems like it's lifted towards the surface. I say relative because you see the right hip is lower. Okay, the right hip is lower than the left hip, okay? But the right heel is higher than the left heel. Now, in reality, all, all we may have done here is, is catch a moment in your flutter kick from your full stroke freestyle, but I want to point out that there is a moment, okay, here's the same moment. Left arm is out, okay, there's your left hand, and look at your feet. Left heel is closer to the surface than your right heel in, in a relative sense. And at the same time, look at your hips, okay, right hip is down, left hip is up. So you have this sense of good body rotation. Okay, the hips are angled, the shoulders are angled, ignore that number that comes up, and yet the heels, um, in a sense, are, are staying relative par relatively parallel to the surface. <clears throat> we may be getting a little ahead of ourselves for now, but um, the result, that, that is the result of the good body rotation. If you look at your right to left rotation, it's fairly evenly matched side to side, and because of that rotation, you're getting good extension on each arm. Okay, so again, right arm is fully extended there, and you're rotated about 45 degrees to the left. And if we look at the left side, left side is rotated there, and your shoulders are about 45 degrees open to the right. Um, and when you're not taking a breath, your head stays neutral. So these are three really nice points that I've um, identified so far, is that you've got good extension with your arms, whether it's left arm or right arm forward, You've got good symmetric rotation side to side, and when you're not breathing, your head is steady looking down at the bottom of the pool. So good work on all that. Now, what can we do to work on improvement? All right, the first thing I'd like to improve with you, Kelly, is your balance. So when I talk about balance, what I'm referring to is the body line in relation to the surface of the water, okay? You can see your hips um, are down and so are your legs. Um, I think that a part of this culprit is um, is what's going on above the water, your recovery and your entry. Um, however, the first thing I'd like you to try in the pool is getting in and relaxing the neck a little bit. Now, you are aligned with your spine, so if you draw a straight line through the crown of your head, through your neck, um, and down your torso, that's pretty good alignment, okay? So what I don't want to have happen is have you just look down and end up having you create a kink, right, where your head is looking down and there's a bend in your neck. I think, however, that if you just float on your stomach with your arms in front of you um, in what we call the Superman glide position, very gentle flutter kick with your legs, or even no kick at all, just push off uh, from the bottom of the pool, let your neck relax into the water, completely turn off 
all the muscles in the back of your neck. <clears throat> there we go. Right here. So if we were to get a, a high def close up of those muscles right on the back of your neck there, they'd be completely relaxed, okay? I think that if you just float there without any active movement of your arms or your legs, your body will naturally reach a position where the hips um, float at the surface or at the surface and level. Now they may not, I don't know, I would have to see you in the water to, to determine if they're going to do that, but the only way you'll know for sure is to try. Now here's the other thing that you can benefit from. Okay, when you come into the water, okay, you start with a nice um, spear, your fingertips are in front of your head here, and this hand is just starting its pull, so you've got nice overlap timing, I really like that. However, watch the direction of your left hand as you extend. So we can see your palm there we go. Nope. One more try. Okay. There's this the surface of your palm. Now we're going to advance it a couple frames at a time. Watch where the surface of your palm goes. Okay, do you see what's happening here? I'm just advancing it two frames at a time. Okay, not until here do we reach a non-positive angle except for the spear. So you're coming in, the palm flares upward, and because you're traveling forward, this um, palm is putting the brakes on, and it's pushing the upper torso up in this direction, right? Which is going to force the hips down in that direction. Um, so that's a big change that you can make. Um, something to, to work on improving is as you extend, focus on extending the, the fingertips and the wrist to a target that's down in front of you a little bit. The location where your wrist is right now, that could be your direct target from where the fingers go in, go directly to that spot without that flare upwards. Okay. Now if we keep advancing it, eventually you do get some good purchase on the water. Okay. So that's nice. Follow through here. That was your left arm, and let's go take a look at what the right arm is doing. And again, this is in relation to balance. Okay, I'm not talking about um, breathing or streamlining or propulsion or anything like that. We're just trying to uh, get these hips up to the surface, because if you look at your body profile here, all of this is creating drag right now. As you're trying to swim forward, you're running into... Right, the water's running into all parts of your body there. If we can get if we can get your hips and legs to be up here, then we've cut your drag in half. Okay? Because we're only getting drag in this little spot instead of between those high and low blue line or red lines. Alright, so let's watch the right hand come in. Okay, so here's your palm. Okay, so nice extension as you rotate. Now watch what's happening to the palm as you rotate. It's flaring up, up. Okay, this is the Aretha Franklin stop in the name of love sign. Okay, you're basically putting your palm up and you're uh, arresting your forward movement or slowing down your forward movement as well as pushing the front of your body up. Right, it's like a kite. You've got a kite tail and that guy tail is pushing the front of your body up, which pushes the back part of the body down. Okay, so that's probably the major change. Now we could come up with, um, you know, with a whole list of things to work on improving, but I think it's really important that you focus on what you're already doing well, and then we build on that. So what are you doing well? You are extending nicely. You're getting nice and tall in the water. You've got good body alignment. Head, spine, and hips are all in a line. Okay, and you've got good side-to-side -side rotation. Those are all great things that you can build on. And what I want you to do to build on them is focus on not scooping upward, okay, as you extend um, slightly shallower angle of entry here so that when you rotate and extend forward, you eliminate that scooping upward with the hand and the elbow dropping. If you instead picture um, the shape, people call it all different names, instead of this gentle scoop this way, right, that's what we don't want. If you instead imagine 
scooping that way, okay? Or draping your arm over a barrel, okay? People use that analogy. Or a Swiss ball. Imagine there's a beach ball here. A different color. All right? Draping your arm over a beach ball. All right, here's the beach ball. And I want you to imagine taking your arm, pointing your elbow towards the camera, in this case a little bit, and letting the wrist and fingertips drop down, okay? And this way you're going to set yourself up to have a uh, palm and forearm facing backwards to get good propulsion, but more importantly, in your case, you're going to eliminate this force that's right now pushing up on the front half of your body, and that force pushing up is causing the back half to go down. So if that's the only thing that we improve right now, you're going to um, find a dramatic improvement in speed and reduction in effort. Um, and then, when we get more video, we can take a look at that as well. So, good job Kelly, and thank you Don for shooting the video, and I hope that's helpful.